Hello, my name is Anders Christian Jakobsen. I'm a professor in theology at Aarhus University in Denmark. I'm glad that I have been invited to give this uh, lecture on reception theory and reception history for IEP. So I want to express my thanks for the invitation uh, to Patricia Sina and Fernando Soler, who takes care of this, and also to the editorial board of these uh, lectures. I find it a very good idea to give uh, IEP members this uh, opportunity. Um, so I, I will give a presentation with the, with the title Reception Theory and Reception History. I will start sharing my some slides now so you can follow my, my uh, presentation better. So as you can see, the title is Reception Theory and Reception History in the Study of Early Christianity. So this is uh, a short introduction to uh, what I will uh, say in my presentation. First, uh, why is uh, theoretical and methodological considerations important to patristic studies or early Christian studies? A very short and preliminary answer to that is that we should be aware of what we are doing and how we are doing it. And the next question is, why is reception theory and reception history a proper method and theory for early Christian studies? Again, a first answer will be that this theory and method is a way to study how and why early Christianity has, has been and still can be important. So the first part of this lecture is about reception theory and reception history. The second part of the lecture is a concrete example of a research project using this method and this theory. So now first to reception theory. What is reception theory? I will begin with a uh, quote from uh, one of the inventors of this method, uh, Hans Robert Jaus. He uh, wrote, Tradition is incapable of perpetuating itself. I presuppose it presupposes reception. Even the classical models are present only because they are received. For whether an old and supposedly timeless question still or again concerns us, while we are indifferent to innumerable other questions, is in the last analysis always determined by an interest which arises from the present situation. So here, Yao's is uh, underlining that our interests are built on the present situation. Our interest for old text and artifacts sprang out of the current situation. And again, a longer quote, uh, this time from Oxford Classical Dictionary explaining Reception. Reception is a specialized sense. Reception in the specialized sense used within literary theory is a concept of German origin associated primarily with the constant school of, uh, of critics led by Hans Robert Jaus and Walter Isa, and often subsequently used to replace words like tradition, heritage, influence, etc. Each key word having its own implied agenda. Studies of reception history are studies of the reading, interpretation, refashioning, appropriation, use and abuse of texts over the centuries. In providing a theoretical framework for such studies, Yao starts from the proposition previously advanced within German hermeneutics, uh, for example, in Hans Georg Gadamer's Truth and Method, uh, that interpretation always takes place within history and is subject to the contingencies of its historical moment. There is no 
permanently correct reading of a text, but an over ever arching fusion of horizons between texts and interpreter. Thus, reception theory, like other modern theories of reading, stresses the importance of the reader within the triangle writer text reader for the construction of meaning. Sorry for this long uh, quotation, but I think it was a very precise definition of uh, reception theory, so I wanted to make you aware of it. It was Yaus and Isa, just a few brief words about that. They were both uh, from Constance, here I spelled in, in German, sorry. Uh, Constance, a German uh, city with a newer university. Uh, so the university in Constance was uh, established in 1966 um, and it was established also with room for new traditions which broke with the with the classical way to organize German universities. So there was, for example, a much higher degree of interdisciplinary uh, work. And that was what uh, these two persons built on. Yaus uh, lived from 1921 to 1997, and uh, Isa from 1926 to 2007. So you can say this theory is a product of new interdisciplinary ways of uh, working. When we talk about reception, reception theory, reception history, the receiver is in focus as the word reception indicates. So it makes sense to try to compare it with a, a more traditional word, namely tradition. When talking about tradition, the past is passed on to the uh, future. So the, the idea is that meaning is established in the past and it's pressed or delivered onwards from the past, from the author, from the text to, uh, to the present time. Uh, so the reader receives, uh, receives a fixed meaning from the past it's more or less like take it or leave it. Talking about reception, it's the other, it's the other way around. The reader receives something from the past. So the meaning is not mainly with, with the author or from the author and in the text, but meaning is mainly produced in the meeting between the reader, the receiver of the text. Um, and the text itself. So if we compare tradition and reception, the, the way of um, sending messages is uh, different. Tradition pushes meaning from the past to the present. Reception receives meaning from the past in a present situation. So this is, as you can already hear about how to create meaning. With this uh, heading, I uh, indicate that meaning is not something permanent. This we also saw in the long quote from the lexicon, but meaning is always something which is uh, created. Meaning is produced in this meeting between the reader or the receiver uh, with the text. So it, it, uh, reception theory try to establish the text as a meeting point uh, between uh, present and past, between reader and author, between reader and text. There is one very important thing here to mention, namely that there is a text to receive in some more um, extreme examples of reader response uh, theories, uh, there is more or less no text to receive. So there can be more extreme claims uh, going like uh, the text is nothing um, in itself. The text does not exist. The text is only established when a reader reads the text and so on. In reception theory, uh, the idea is that the 
that understanding, creating meaning is a meeting between an ancient or also present text and the reader who receives the text. So this was uh, uh, in general about uh, reception theory. So the next uh, side of the other side of this is reception history. So it's two uh, sides of the same coin, so to say. Um, reception uh, history is about study of concrete texts, or it could also be artifacts, images, sculptures, uh, whatever. But the history of uh, the study of concrete text or artifacts. Um, and in this study, you use reception theory as what I presented uh, a minute ago. So reception history studies how interpretation of texts have changed over time through transformative reception in different uh, communities, um, in different places, in different trans, uh, translations, in different cultural contexts, in different con uh, uh, chronological periods, uh, etc. So, so it's a reception history is studying the concrete historical reception of texts or artifacts during a long historical process. So what's then received and what's not received? I already indicated that in reception or according to reception theory, the reader does not receive exactly what the author wanted to express. The receiver receives something new, which is um, uh, which is produced in this meeting with the text, where the current situation, the current context of the reader, is a very very important factor as uh, well. And more more than that, reception history uh, also studies texts. Um, uh, studies how or why some text has been received and other texts have not been received because it's not only the case that parts of the meaning the the author's meaning are left behind and parts are received uh, but that we also have texts which are simply not received we know texts by title for example in other sources but we have we haven't received uh, this uh, text. So, so reception history studies what has been received and what has not been received because the question what has not been received is also an interesting historical question telling about, for example, uh, in this case, early Christianity, what was uh, at hand in early Christianity which has been left behind and is not taken further on during the history. So the, uh, uh, the history of reception is also a study of a selection process where some texts, some artifacts, some ideas, some thoughts are received by later epochs and others are uh, not. And then you can start thinking about why is these texts, these ideas, these artifacts received and others are not received. So this creates a new kind of um, objectivity. The first uh, claim or one of the basic claims in reception theory is that there is no objective true meaning in a text or of a text. And this is often claimed against historical criticism, which uh, aims at establishing the original uh, true meaning of a text. So, so uh, reception theory claims that there is not such a uh, primary uh, objective true meaning of the text. So this is a question of 
what is objectivity then when using reception theory and reception history. So uh, reception history can establish a new objectivity uh, which is based exactly on these empirical studies of concrete receptions of a given text or a, a given corpus of uh, text studying what what is received and what is not received and what is what has been received uh, how has it been received and uh, how has it been interpreted during this process of uh, reception so this is a, a new kind of objectivity where we concretely can see uh, that some texts were uh, received by later in later periods some were not and in these texts we can see which ideas were uh, found useful in a certain period uh, of the history and so on so uh, reception history can establish a new more empirical uh, kind of objectivity compared to uh, to other kinds of uh, interpretation. What challenges do we meet in this kind of uh, interpretation? There are, of course, uh, many challenges, as we find with all kinds of uh, theories and uh, methods. Here, I want to mention specifically three uh, challenges. I have not said problems, I could have used this word as well, but I say challenges. Um, and these are all three basically uh, concerned with how we can identify cases of uh, reception. So how can we in identify when we have a case of reception when we are studying the history. Uh, in, in many cases, we can see uh, a direct transmission and reception. We can, for example, see if a text is republished in exactly the same form, if it's uh, translated into other languages, but uh, definitely precisely the same text. In, in commentaries, we can see there is a concrete uh, reception of the text which is commented on. We can find quotations which are clearly marked. We can find uh, names mentioned in text and so on. In, in all these cases, the challenge is not uh, that big because we have clear indications in the texts of what has been received and what has uh, not been received. But then in many other cases, there are more indirect uh, transmissions and reception, cases of reception. So this is, for example, when, when an idea is uh, reused, for example, in early Christianity, a lot of uh, classical philosophy was uh, reused without naming a specific author or a specific texts. So how can we... Uh, decide whether an, an idea uh, is an exactly uh, reception of, for example, an idea in, in Plato, or we also often touch upon hidden quotations. So having only the feeling that here is a quotation from somewhere without being fully able to identify what text is quoted, um, we have even more difficult uh, situations where we have just allusions to other texts or ideas. Um, so th this, this is a really challenged reception theory and reception history to be able to, um, uh, to identify uh, what is received and um, in, in different cases. And even more difficult it is to to uh, create or to, uh, to find out why some texts are received and uh, reused and others are not. So again, coming back to this idea of texts we know about, but we have uh, not any reception of them, we can only in these cases speculate about what were the content of these texts and why was they not 
received by later uh, stages in uh, in the traditions. So, so there are a number of challenges connected to using reception theory and reception history, um, but it's all challenges which leads the scholar into um, complicated uh, thinking about uh, how the relation between a given text and, and uh, the tradition before can be established. So this was what I would say about um, uh, reception theory and reception history from a more general point of view. And now uh, in the end of this lecture, I will give uh, an example of a concrete project using reception theory and reception history. So this uh, project will had the title, The History of Human Freedom and Dignity in Western Civilization. And uh, you can see that now the format of my slides has changed uh, because um, this was an EU uh, funded project. And uh, with this uh, format of the slides, I recognize uh, uh, support from the European Commission for this uh, project. So a project funded by the European Union with the title, The History of Human Freedom and Dignity in Western Civilization. Um, briefly about the idea of uh, this uh, project. Basically, we wanted to study uh, theological, philosophical, anthropology focusing on uh, concepts of human freedom and human dignity as they are expressed in what we call Western tradition. This Western tradition is only a, a geographical limitation because we had to narrow the project down. To do that, we uh, decided to look at the receptions of in this case, origin in Western European theology and philosophy and not in Eastern traditions. So, so we only have Western as a geographical uh, term and not, as, not so much as an ideological term. So in the, in the Western tradition, uh, or the tradition from August, Augustine is uh, or has always been uh, dominating. But what we uh, wanted to study was how the reception of origins anthropology had been, has been used to, um, to question this Augustinian tradition. We, we uh, already knew that there were a number of cases of uh, philosophers and, uh, and theologians during the uh, centuries in Western Europe who uh, relied on origin when they wanted to criticize Augustine and the Augustinian tradition. Uh, so we wanted uh, to map this complex history of reception by help of reception theory and also network theory, which I will come back to in, in a second. So why why did we want to do that? This was uh, in order to explore the importance of theological and philosophical anthropology for modern concepts of human beings. So our clear impression as philosophers and theologians uh, was that uh, theological and philosophical anthropology was not so much in focus when uh, uh, people in our century discuss uh, what a human being uh, is and when they try to establish, for example, reasons for claims about human freedom and human dignity. So we wanted to substantiate uh, the ideas of uh, human freedom and dignity going further back in the history, uh, in this case to Origen and Augustine. So 
what we did with reception history was concretely to focus on how origins ideas about human freedom and dignity uh, have been received and used in later uh, times in the West, in the Western tradition. So it was not so much the question about whether whether these who received and used origins ideas had used him correctly, so to say, in in a kind of what is the correct original meaning of origin. Our focus was clearly on how was all origin used by later uh, authors who wrote uh, philo philosophical and theological works on uh, human freedom and dignity. So we looked for recontextualizations uh, of origins ideas in this long uh, tradition. And there we of course met some problems um, as I mentioned before, to, uh, about deciding what comes from origin and what is not from origin, because um, uh, we have this uh, direct and indirect reception. In the case of origin, we have a lot more indirect reception than direct reception, am among other things, because um, origin was uh, a figure who. Uh, were a, a bit suspicious in the tradition because uh, his I, some of his ideas were condemned uh, quite early uh, on. So in many, many cases, these authors who used Origins ideas used them without mentioning that they had these ideas from Origins. So there was, there was a huge work uh, focusing on is this at all something which relate to uh, origin or is it a direct reception of uh, origins text? Has a certain person read origins text himself or was it an indirect uh, reception where a certain author has uh, read another author who had used origin and so on? Uh, so we have a very blurred reception of uh, origin in the Western tradition. Now, having then identified uh, examples of reception directly or indirectly of origins, ideas about human freedom and dignity, uh, we wanted to map these uh, findings. And there we uh, would use network theory, which is uh, an idea about um, uh, the history, historical transmission always uh, taking place in networks. So it is often the case that an idea, in this case from origin, went through a lot of um, points in the history where it was received and reinterpreted and reused and then uh, later uh, on this was received by another and so on. So we, we uh, would find not a number of direct receptions of origin only, but a huge network of uh, direct and indirect um, receptions. So, uh, so we would insert these um, findings of uh, these cases of reception in a database and this should enable us to draw out the uh, network maps showing um, how these uh, lines of perceptions has been running through the Western tradition. Uh, when I say we would do that is because that we didn't manage to do this, uh, to finish this part of the project. So we've had a lot of studies finding perceptions of origin uh, throughout uh, the Western tradition from uh, the time of Augustine until the present time. But um, we didn't uh, manage to insert all these findings in, in a database and uh, be, be able in the end to draw these reception and network maps of receptions. So we hope to do uh, this uh, in a later stage of uh, the project. So finally, I will mention some of the sub-projects uh, which we have. Uh, this 
internet uh, address there you can see uh, much more about the project and also the sub projects so now just to to uh, give you an impression of what sub projects we had i have uh, uh, taken the list here from the web page so uh, first we began with a project on uh, origin ideas in received by august in origin in the early medieval period uh, origin and Bernard of Clairvaux, and so on. All in all, we had 14 sub-projects in this uh, project, which uh, which was covered by each uh, PhD uh, scholar who studied this concrete um, uh, project. Now, now this project has come to an end, uh, even if we have not finished and reached all our goals, but uh, most of the uh, dissertations are now finished and in a second step, we can hopefully work on inserting all these uh, examples of reception in, um, in a database and be able to see how the lines of reception has been running through the Western European history. So this is a project which will continue even if the concrete uh, funded project has ended. I will uh, stop sharing my screen now and come back to this full view only to say that this was what I wanted to present to you and um, thank you for listening. I hope it was um, of some inspiration for how to do work on early Christianity and the, the importance of early Christianity for later historical periods and also for the present time. So thank you very much.